This is the new Bugatti Chiron Supersport, and it's a little bit like a private jet because it's super fast, it's super luxurious, and you have to be super wealthy in order to travel in one. And that's why I'm just going to go off over there and review a Volkswagen Polo. I'm just joking, they are going to let me review this thing, and to do that, I'm going to talk you around the exterior. The interior, I'm going to tell you what's good about it. What's not so good about it? Yes, even this Bugatti isn't perfect. And of course, I'm going to take it for a drive. In fact, I'm going to head to the German Autobahn because I want to see exactly how fast I can drive this thing on the public road. Yeah, I'm even going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Oh, and if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel because we're going to be doing more cars like this in future and you don't want to miss out. Let's start off this review by talking about the design of the new Chiron Supersport. So, I don't know if you can tell already, it's slightly longer than the standard car for improved aerodynamics. For instance, it's allowed them to increase the tear-off area, which is the distance between this part of the car and this part of the car, by 44%, and the distance between these two parts affect the amount of drag. So this car has less drag than the standard Chiron. Also, it's got a bigger rear diffuser for more downforce, and because of that bigger rear diffuser, they've had to put the exhaust pipes vertically like that, rather than horizontally. Let me just check something there. I've got my Rimac stick of truth here. Yes, that's all real. Yeah, it's all real. Anyway, let's move down the side of the car. So as with the normal Chiron, you have 21 inch alloys at the back as standard and 20s at the front. Though the Supersport has its own unique design of alloy wheel. You also get Chiron Supersport here on the fuel filler cap. Something you'll be seeing a lot of, no doubt, if you have this car. Another feature is this, the Supersport gets these special air vents here. In fact, there's nine holes here in the wing on each side, just like on the EB110 Supersport. And let me just check those. Yes, 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 look at all that. Yeah, vouched by the Rimac stick of truth yet again. Now here at the front, you've got bigger air curtains as well, bigger air intakes, and a larger front splitter for more downforce here at the front as well. And as a result, it all looks a little bit meaner, especially in this black, sort of looks like the Batmobile. Though if you don't fancy this color, I've got another color over there. What do you think of this orange and black color scheme? It certainly stands out, doesn't it? And maybe that's what you want when you're paying 3 million euros plus taxes for a Chiron Supersport. It's got matching interior, glass roofs, it's kind of cool. Though it does sort of look like a Japanese giant hornet, doesn't it? But then this car does have a sting in its tail. Ha 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 ha. Now let's talk about the engine, and here it is. What I've got here is an 8-litre quad-turbo W16. It's absolutely massive, and it puts out 1,600 horsepower, depending on which version of the car you have. Want to see this bit here? This is the gearbox off the front, and it actually sends the power to the front axle where you've got a limited slip differential. It's a seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox. It's also got, obviously, the power going from here to the rear. And once again, you've got another electronically controlled limited slip differential there. Now I want to show you this, look. See this valve here? So that is for the turbos. So when you're at lower RPM, you only actually have one turbo on each bank operating, and that's to reduce turbo lag. And that's why you get maximum torque of 1600 newton meters from just 2000 RPM. But when you rev the engine past 4000 RPM, this valve opens and all four turbos start blowing. And at 6700 RPM, this thing is sucking in a thousand liters of air a second in order for combustion to take place. It's absolutely nuts. You have the same carbon ceramic brakes as on the standard Chiron. So you've got 420 millimeter discs at front, 400 at the back. You've got eight piston calipers and four pads at the front and six piston calipers with two pads at the back. Should give some pretty good stopping power. But let's find out by doing a brake test. I'm going to do a full emergency stop from 60 miles an hour. See how long it takes this car to stop. So let's see. Braking now. Oh, full stompage. Right. So, stopped in 33 meters. When you're braking from higher speeds, then you also get some help from the air brake. So it'll deploy from 180 kilometers an hour. And when you are braking, the combined effect of the normal friction brakes and the air brake, from a speed of 380 kilometers an hour, you get two Gs of deceleration. Now let's talk about the car chassis. So it has a common fiber tub, which is so stiff. Its torsional rigidity is 50,000 Newton meters per degree. What that means is that you can bolt the back of the chassis onto the wall, get a metal bar, a very strong one, attach it to the front, so it's meat along the metal bar, and you could put down 50 tonnes worth of pressure on that bar, and the chassis would only twist by one degree. It's insane. 
As with the normal Chiron, the Supersport has double wishbone suspension all round. However, they have tweaked the suspension ever so slightly. So while you have similar springs, the dampers have been retuned to cope with the car's slightly higher top speed. Welcome to the inside of the Bugatti Chiron Supersport. Now the only changes over the standard car really are Chiron Supersport written there into the headrest and here on the knee pads as well. Other than that, it's just like a normal Chiron if there is such a thing as a normal Chiron. And this is a really bespoke car and it's so exquisite here on the inside. I like the actual trim on this one. So we've got leather here on the steering wheel, but then it's carbon fiber and all the metal bits just feel super expensive. You've got your engine start button there, your launch control button there. I will be launching the car later on in the video, you betcha. Also, you've got the driving mode switch there. In front of you, you've got a big speedo, which goes all the way to 500 kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a digital rev count on the left and an infotainment screen on the right, which has your sat nav and various other bits and pieces as well. One thing to note is this though, look. Manually operated steering column in a three million euro car. Hmm, not so sure about that. What I'm sure about though is the seating position. It's absolutely brilliant and the seats are glorious. And of course they're electrically operated. Also what's glorious is this bit here. See this, this sort of C, it matches the C shape on the air intakes on the side. In fact, everything about this car is exquisite. It's just wonderful. I like these little switches here. They're for your climate control. But if you press a button, you can get some information on them, such as the maximum horsepower you've had out the engine. So this one has gone all the way up to 1,615 horsepower and look, it's revved to be on 7,000 RPM. It's also showing the maximum speed this car's done. It's only saying 113 miles an hour, but I'm gonna go on the Autobahn and I reckon I'm gonna easily beat that and we'll find out exactly how fast I go a bit later on in this video. Other things to mention are the pedals, are lovely, expensive aluminium feeling pedals. And while the carpets aren't deep like in a Rolls Royce, they do feel expensive. There is a bit of practicality in here. We've got some storage area here, decent sized door bin, and look, a glove box of mediocre capacity. But what about if you need to carry some proper luggage? Hmm? Being a car wipe video, we need to assess this car's practicality. It is important, you know. So this is the entirety of your luggage space, that. Now you can get bespoke Chiron luggage, look with the blue to match your car if you want, which fits perfectly, but that's your lot. So if you wanna go for a trip across a continent, you're probably gonna to have to get some of your staff to come along in a support car. That brings us to five annoying things about the Chiron. You can't go anywhere in this car without people taking photos of it. Okay? Yeah, it's okay, don't worry, do you take your photos? Yes, or the attention does get a little bit tiresome after a while, darling. When you're driving along, the big wheels actually flick up stones and there's some vents there to relieve pressure from the wheel arches, but they also allow the stones to get flicked up here. And then they end up just gathering here on the side skirt, like that. Yeah. And you have to get one of your staff to remove them. Right. There are no dedicated cup holders in the Chiron at all. All you've got is this slightly recessed area there, but when you accelerate, I think your tea's gonna go everywhere, isn't it? If you just suddenly come into some money and you think, I'm gonna get myself a Bugatti Super Sport, awesome, I'm gonna have it in the color of the world record breaking car, that wonderful black and orange, bad luck. Only the Super Sport 300 Plus has that color scheme, not the normal Super Sport. And there are only 30 Super Sport 300 plus is made and they're all sold. So you can't have that color scheme, I'm afraid, unless you get it spray painted yourself or maybe wrapped by someone like Yanni. The Chiron doesn't have surround view cameras as standard. Instead, you just get this single reversing camera and the screen is actually quite small so you can't see very clearly where you're reversing exactly. That's a real pain on something as wide as this. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. If you're buying a Bugatti, you can come here to the factory in Molsheim and spec your car in the design center. So customers will come through this door. They won't shut it, they'll have stuff to shut it after them. And to make sure that they don't spec their car in a way that it looks a little bit, you actually have one of the guys who works for Bugatti as a designer, designing the cars, Yasha, he sits behind there and he'll help you configure your car so it looks good, okay? Then you can come through here and look at all the different elements to do with the car. You can have a look at the different paint options. Look, we've got the swatches just over here, so you can choose your ideal exterior paint. Do you want exposed carbon or do you like a nice flat blue? It's up to you. And then while you're here, 
You may as well get yourself some extra Bugatti bits and pieces, such as these speakers for your house. These are £300,000. Yes, that's quite a lot. The Supersport gets an upgraded exhaust over the standard Chiron, which apparently sounds fruitier, so shall we find out for ourselves? Go on, start it up. Oh, go on, rave it. Oh. Oh. There's a lot of heat coming out of there. Rev it some more. I'm getting high. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's actually quite nice, that is. <laughs> it sounds pretty fruity. Shane, there's a bit of a soft limiter on it, but still, it sounds better than a Rimac Nevera, even though the Nevera might be a bit quicker. So yeah, Matty Rimac, your, your car doesn't sound as good as the Bugatti. Now, wait a minute, the Bugatti is now also your car, isn't it? Oh well. The car will alter its ride height and angle of attack depending on what mode you've got in. So if you put it into auto bar mode, it sort of goes a bit lower and more steeply rate for improved high speed stability. And then if you're driving around town or worried about speed humps, you can actually lift it so that you can make it over them without grounding out and damaging your carbon fiber front splitter. The Supersport has some special Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires specifically designed for the car. And you can tell they're the official tires because they have BG written on them. Personally, I prefer a BJ, but there we go. Now these tires are capable of sustained 500 kilometers an hour, which is 313 miles an hour, and they're not cheap. For a set of these, £10,000. With the Chiron, you get two keys. There's the normal ignition key to start the car, and then there's the special speed key. Now, if you come to a standstill and you turn this, it unleashes the full potential of the car. So just on the normal key, it will do 236 miles an hour. With the speed key, you can go all the way up to 273 miles an hour. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, Matt, uh, the Super Sport 300, you know, it's called that because it can do over 300 miles an hour. And it did, it was clocked at 304 miles an hour. And this car is capable of 304 miles an hour. However, in order to do that, you need everything to be perfect. Conditions totally perfect. And so Bugatti actually limit the speed of all the cars that they sell to customers just for a margin of safety. Because if conditions aren't entirely perfect, things could go wrong. And you don't want that, not at 304 miles an hour. It's finally time to see what this Chiron is like to drive. It's actually really, really easy to live with as a daily. So I'm just going to go into normal drive mode and let the gearbox do its thing. And I'm just going to poodle about. And I could just be in a normal car. My mum could drive this no problem at all. It's just so easy to drive, especially for a car that is capable of such insane speed. Yet the way it goes over bumps is just pretty much like a hatchback. That's not true, actually. It feels more sophisticated the way it deals with bumps than a hatchback because its suspension is more sophisticated. Visibility forward is extremely good because you've got a relatively low dash. It's all right at the side and this view out the back, although it is obscured slightly by what looks like a sperm whale's tail. A huge, huge wing. It's so easy to drive, I can't get my head around it. But then if you want it, you can just take control of things and... Yeah, put your foot down and did you hear that? Wait for a second for the boost to build, but then it comes on and it comes on strong. And then this car just takes off. And then when you lift off for a corner, you just hear the gases go <laughs> So good. And in a corner, considering it's a relatively heavy car, it's so planted, it's incredible. And of course you've got four wheel drive traction to just, whoa, just haul you out the vents. It's nuts. And oh, that is so addictive, getting this thing on boost and flooring it. And then you look down at what gear you're in and it pulls as though you're in a much lower gear than you actually are. The torque from this engine is nuts. So good. Oh, and yeah, if you want to overtake people, it's just like. <laughs> I'm going to put it into auto mode again, see what it's just like when you want to calm down again and chill. Obviously being a dual clutch, it's not quite as silky smooth at changing gears as one with a torque converter, but then when you're on it and you want to change gears yourself, it's like smack, smack, smack through the gearbox. All right, I think I'm going to turn around. I've got to be careful. This is a very expensive car. Um, so I think I might turn around here. Reverse it down there, get it right. Oh, got a little camera there. It's showing me what's behind me, sort of. Oh. It's not as difficult as you might imagine in something so powerful. Do you know what? Every time I drive this car, I keep forgetting that you have to knock it twice to get into drive. Otherwise, you just sit there in neutral looking like a complete and utter idiot, just revving away. 
you know what they've done in this car? Very, very important this, especially for a hypercar. The position of the central tunnel, the height of it, and the armrest here, it's perfect for just driving along like this. Maybe you shouldn't drive a car this powerful, just like that. But you can do, or grip it properly, take control. <laughs> do you know what's super impressive? It's the actual feel you get through the controls. It really is just so well set up. It's totally like tuned into your brain. Like the amount of steering input is the amount of response you get from the car, what you expect to get. The brake pedal feel is so good. You can just judge the braking so it's not at all jerky. You can make it really smooth and then if you want to really stop hard, it will do. It's nicely set up. It makes the car actually feel a lot lighter than it really is. And you might not think that from something that's capable of these kind of speeds. You think it'd just be a one trick pony, but it's not. It's more of a multifaceted horse. That's a weird analogy that no one's ever used before and will probably never be used again. It makes a noise like a horse, isn't it? Sorry about that. Do you know what, though? This thing is about top speed, isn't it? I need to go somewhere where I can open this thing up, so I think it's time to head to Germany and the Autobahn. Before we head on to the Autobahn, it makes sense for me to fill this thing up to the brim with petrol because when you're maxing out, it just drinks fuel at an alarming rate. So here we go. Oi, no, don't put 95 in my car. Oh. I'll only have 1200 horsepower instead of the 1600 horsepower. Yeah, I don't want just 1200 horsepower. That wouldn't be enough. I want the full 16. So all right, I'll pay a bit extra. 98, bloody hell. All right, Andy, how good. Andy Wallace, Bugatti's test driver and Le Mans winner as well. Here we go, joining the Autobahn. Blimey! Whew. <laughs> that was 200 kilometres an hour like that. Let's open it up again, let's go. Christ, 250! Oi! This is where you're gonna need your carbon ceramic brakes because there's always someone just pulling in front of you <laughs> in a Skoda, not so rapid. Wow! 300 kilometers an hour! Woo! That's 196 miles an hour, almost 200. And <laughs> it's just the speed at which it gets to that. It's, it's nuts! I want to do over 200 miles an hour. Whoa! Whoa! Don't pull out! Don't trust him. It's a Renault capture. Yeah, you can't trust those kind of Renault captures, not a, the kind of speeds we're doing in this thing. Woo! And the way it takes off. Wow. Here we go. just gets to 300 kilometers an hour so effortlessly. It's nuts. Whoa! Whoa, that was a lot of speed there. 208 miles an hour. <laughs> and he's just pulling, 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 pulling. If you come out on the autobahn late at night, there's no one around, this thing will just smash up to its 273 mile an hour top speed. Well, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Gets through its petrol pretty quickly when you're doing that though. You can actually see the gauge move. You know what, while I'm cruising along, I'm gonna give you a bit of useful consumer advice about this car. So I have noticed that when you're just cruising along at 150 kilometers an hour, you get a slight whine from the engine ever so slightly. It's not too bad, but you do notice it and you could find it a bit irritating maybe. However, when you're going over that speed, you don't notice it because you're too busy focusing on what's going on. So it doesn't really matter. Anyway, let's get on. Come on! 
Wow, this thing just hauls ass. And it breaks so well. <laughs> Get out of the way! Get out of the way, damn you! Do you know what? I've been thwarted twice now by Renault. Right, the car's getting low on fuel. I'm going to give it one last go. I've done 208 miles an hour. I want to try and get past 210. There's another opportunity. Woo! That was some serious speed there. What did I do? So I just managed to do 212 miles an hour. I wanted to get over 200, and then I did 208, and I wanted to get over 210, and I did it 212 miles an hour in the Chiron Supersport. I can relax now. Oh, no, no. There is one last thing to do, obviously. Bugatti says the Chiron Supersport will do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 2.4 seconds. But I don't believe them. I don't at all, so I think it's only fair that I test it for myself. So I'm gonna do that with my specialist timing gear up here. So, lift on the brake, very hard, press launch control, floor the throttle. Little boost. Off we go. Bit of tire spin there. Bugatti, they're a right bunch of liars. Can't trust them at all. Look, it does not 16, 2.3 seconds. Terrible. <laughs> that was nuts! <laughs> that was utterly nuts! <laughs> I can't believe it does it, how it all just works together, the gearbox, the engine, everything, and it goes and does that. The poor tyres, though, I do feel sorry for the tyres, but they, they, they did their job. So then, what's my final verdict on the Bugatti Chiron Supersport? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy it. Actually, I don't know, just do whatever. I'm all a bit overwhelmed, really. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you didn't, there's clearly something the matter with you. Let me know of some other hypercars you'd like me to review in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to sell your car and we'll get a great price for it.